the people who are sent to support us, sent to disturb us, sent to inspire us, and sent to trouble us, sent to enthuse us, sent to still us. For the people of God who are sent to reveal the face of Christ to us, thanks be to God. As we prepare for the word preached, would you join with me your hearts and minds in prayer? O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. As I said this morning during the welcome, we've just come through the thin place, as the Celtic people called it. The thin place, that trio of days, All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' and All Souls' Day, when the insulation between our world and the next world becomes so thin. But we've also come through a different kind of thin place, because the 500th anniversary of the Reformation was just on Monday. And so to me, thinking about this and thinking about Phyllis Tickle's words that every 500 years, God has a rummage sale. I don't know, this time around it feels more like a dumpster fire, but still, every 500 years, God has a rummage sale, and here we are in that thin place. To me, it feels like a double thin place. What do you do with that? What are we to learn from that? What should we be looking for? And who should we be remembering? Who will reveal to us the face of Christ as the epistle asks us? So a lot of the saints have been floating through my head this week. Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, Dorothy Day, Dorothy Day, who 101 years ago walked around this neighborhood because she went to the University of Illinois. Did you know this? And Jane Addams. <laughs> oh, but of course, I always have Jane Addams with me right here. When everybody else was dressing up like Dolly Parton or Cindy Lauper for fourth grade Famous People Day, I dressed up like Jane Addams. <laughs> But it's not the famous saints. It's not the famous saints that have been on my heart and in my mind mostly this week. It's the everyday saints. The ones who are like you. They were just church people. Church people that I knew when I was a little girl. <clears throat> For some reason, for some reason, when I was um, at my, my fan fest last week, I started thinking about Ruth Cox, this woman who was one of the little old ladies of my church when I was a girl. Now, I don't know why Ruth Cox was in my head. M maybe it's because there were lots of people at the fan festival that I was at who were dressed in cosplay, and Ruth Cox on any given day kind of looked like Yoda, um, except she didn't have green skin. But really, she looked, she always looked to me like Yoda. She was very short with a little belly and a wrinkled face. But she reminded me of Yoda, too, in the way that she was wise. She was so very wise. She curated our church's library, and she was forever slipping my mom books. Not popular Christian books, but theology books with notes written in her very perfect and particular handwriting. Dear Marilyn, I think you will get a lot out of this book. Please read it. Yes, please read it. There was no, you might enjoy reading this. It was, please read it, signed Ruth Cox. 
you know, when certain saints of the church tell you to do something, you do it. And so my mom read all of those books that Ruth Cox passed along to her. I'm certain if I go home and I, I look through the bookshelves, there will be a few books with notes in them from her. But the thing that I remember most about Ruth Cox and the thing that kept coming back to me as I prepared for worship today was that awful, awful thing that happened in the late, in the late 1980s when a, an airplane crashed into a hotel in Indianapolis, Indiana. There was this big fireball. <laughs> Lots of people died, including including Ruth Cox's daughter, Catherine. She was, a, she was a housekeeper at that hotel. And the reason why I bring that up today is because it was in that moment of awful, horrible, tragic grief that I really began to see her as a saint. I watched as a small girl the way that she navigated her grief and moved through life. I was shocked she kept coming back to church even though she sat there with tears running down her face. Some of you know what it's like to do that. But then, but then it was this story that I remember hearing at the dinner table that made me realize I was seeing the face of Christ when I saw her face. My dad was at Bible study, must have been in middle school because the, the uh, student pastor, Wayne Shannon, was leading Bible study. And they were reading um, one of those Bible stories when, one of those Old Testament stories when somebody's child dies. And my dad sat there next to Ruth Cox and he said, and he'll tell you to this day, he said, it just came out of my mouth. I didn't even realize what I was saying or remember who I was sitting next to when I said, I just don't know how you would do that. I just don't know how you would keep going if your child died. And Ruth took in a big, deep breath and looked at him with her kind eyes and said, you just do. You just do. This is what it means to be a saint of God here in this community of faith with each other. It absolutely does not mean that we are perfect. We stumble all over ourselves. Our humanity shows up in the most annoying and ugly and ugh, ridiculous ways. But here, in the communion of Christ, we see one another with grace. And it was that grace with which she was able to look at him and not smack him as would have been my inclination <laughs> but rather to say oh you just do you just do I thought too about Miriam Hebner, again one of the church ladies from my church growing up I thought about <clears throat> the way in which my congregation, my home congregation, absolutely imploded at the end of the 1990s. They had to call in um, uh, people from the Alban Institute to help mediate the conflict that was going on. It was awful. It was ridiculous. It made my mom physically ill, this conflict. And she was in the church kitchen one day fixing food for some event. The ladies in the kitchen were talking. And my mom just said, I, I, just, I just don't know what we're going to do. I just don't know how we're going to get through this. People are so hateful towards each other. They're being so vindictive and mean. And I just don't know how we're going to get through this. And Miriam Hebner, without missing a beat, as she's washing the dishes, said, Oh, we will. We will. 
We've been through wars and we've been through financial crises and we've been through church fires and we've been through ministers leaving. She listed this whole litany of things. And she said, we will. You just do. This is what it means to be a saint of the church. It's not about being perfect. <laughs> it's about living within that communion of saints, the communion, the community of Christ, and being willing to walk with each other. Sometimes we lead, sometimes we follow. Sometimes. Sometimes we retell the old, old, old stories like Karen did so that then we can figure out how to be the church for today in a world that is no more broken than it was then. Because really, if you look back in history, there's never been a good time. The good old days, hmm, they're a figment of our nostalgia, not a fact of history. So that's why we keep showing up, listening to one another, not popping each other in the nose when we say something clumsy, but rather why we keep being the community together in communion with Christ. And that's where Christ's face gets revealed. I was at an interfaith meeting <clears throat> last month. We were preparing for the interfaith Thanksgiving service and suddenly Amy Felty, who's a member of the Baha'i community here in our town, stopped out of the blue and looked at me and said, I'm watching people in these days, in this moment in history. She said, I'm watching them tear themselves apart and put themselves back together according to what they really believe in, what they really value. They're putting themselves back together according to what they're willing to do and be in the world. And then she looked at me and she said, it's a wondrous time. It's a wondrous time to be alive. And I thought, that's so different than the dumpster fire that I normally think of it as. As we live here in this perhaps thinnest of the thin places, we have to remember that it's a wondrous time to be alive. And that if we want to figure out how to be alive in these days, yes, of course, of course, we could look at the famous saints, the lives of the famous saints. But we could also just look to our right and our left in the pew at the people who reflect the face of Christ to us on a daily basis. And then continue to be community together. May God bless us. May our hearts be found grateful. And may we continue to be willing. Amen. Amen.